All right, what's going on people? Welcome back into another video. Now, this is part two of the balance changes to the Paladin season three. Uh, every champion has been basically changed. There's like two or three that haven't been touched yet, but maybe touched uh, while we're in PDS, we'll see. Uh, in the first video, I talked about front lines and healers. On the second part, I'm going to talk about flanks and damages. So let's start off with Androxus. Androxus nether step is base. Another step will now have 10% extra distance, which is actually pretty cool. Not gonna lie, uh, people are not gonna have to focus that much on having that extra distance on the nether step. And then he had two cards that legit changed completely. I'm not gonna talk about the others because there's just like tiny little numbers are changing, so you guys can check that out if you want to. Leave the link in the description, don't worry. I actually forgot to put the link in the description in part one, but I'll go there and put it up as soon as I am editing this video. Um, Rather wait, instead of actually reducing your damage while you're in the air, you now heal while you're drifting, which is really cool. You can just use your nether step, stay as much as possible on the air, you can heal up to 250 per second. And instead of with the quick draw, instead of reloading speed, now you have max ammo. So the base max ammo, instead of going like to 6, you can go all the way up to 11. And that's actually pretty damn cool, not gonna lie. Alright, now let's go into Buck. Buck and is ensnared the talent that would allow you to increase the damage on people that you would hit with the net shot now has 20 percent extra damage instead of 30 so it's a little bit of a nerf and also the duration of it is now increased to 2.5 now you guys may know this resilience will reduce the amount of time it has like a, a minimum i think um but the thing is resilience now has been nerfed as well so it's not all bad news so let's continue. As for cards, his Jigish is Siphon, uh, it's a card of recovery. It would gain lifesteal after 4 seconds after you use recovery. Instead, you will have more speed while using recovery. So that's actually pretty cool. Exhilarate instead of healing after you hit a champion with the heroic leap. This is something that a lot of people would use with Bounce House. Instead, hitting at least one champion with a heroic leap reduces its cooldown. You can go all the way to 5, but it only can happen for every 5 seconds. So you can, every 5 seconds, reduce the cooldown of Heroic Leap itself. So, double Heroic Leap may actually come back if you hit like 2 or 3 people, which is really, really cool as well. No Escape, uh, the card would increase your movement speed by X% percent for 5 seconds after getting a kill blow, now actually works even with eliminations. So, meaning that you don't need to kill somebody, you can assist just it, you know, you can just throw a net shot to that person before it dies, it's considered an, uh, an elimination, an assist, uh, an assist. But it has been nerfed on percentage, so it's going to be giving you maximum 25% speed. Let's go into Eevee. Eevee's cards and her flicker card for Blink, the one that would heal you after you use Blink. Now, with double Blink, it would be probably P. They have to nerf it. They, they basically nerfed it. I just needed to talk about this one because this is one of the cards that it's the most used. Then this one here was actually completely changed. Increase your movement speed by percentage while out of combat. Instead, you will now have more HP. You can go all the way to 150 HP, meaning that, you know, she's not going to be as squishy as she is. Now let's go into Koga. He had a buff to his HP. He now has 2000 HP, 100 more, which is pretty good. It's almost like a card to increase HP by two. So that's pretty good as well. Uh, as for his uh, submachine guns, they reduced the damage fall off at range. So it means that at longer range, you're going to be able to do more damage. And they also reduced the spread at range, which means that you're going to be able to spray down people a lot easier. It's going to be so much stronger than the submachine guns. It's insane. Um, Dragon Stance also now consumes 20 energy to switch into Dragon Stance. So there's not going to be any more people just switching to Dragon Stance and Skewer, you know, and then just do it again and skewer with the dragon talent. Uh, because as soon as you consume that entire energy to use the skewer, what happens is now you're going to have to wait to have 20 energy. Now, but what they did is they decreased the rate of energy decay. So it's going to be like half. Instead of going as fast as it was, as it was going every time you would go into that stance, uh, it's now going to be taking longer for you to stay in the stance, in the stance which is going to be kind of bad if you think about it because the dragon the dragon blades the you know the his his cause like his claws are actually pretty strong if you think about it but hey let, let's see what happens now as for cards the one that it actually changed a lot was the one that would give you ultimate charge upon getting killing blows instead now you can increase your max ammo and going all the way to 50. so 
Jesus Christ, this is insane. I don't think people have the notion of how much this means. And I'm not entirely sure if this divides by two, by the two, um, you know, the two uh, SMGs, or if it goes for both. Because if this, this, go, this should go like for, you know, for dividing. So it should be 25 for one, 25 for the others, for the other. So it doesn't look like much, but trust me, this is insane. And together with other cards that give you ammo back, or like, for example, the card that gives you ammo while you're using agility, you're just going to be unstoppable. Now, Lex didn't really had a lot of things. It was just four cards to change a little bit on the values, you know, little stuff, not too much. Let's go into Maeve. Now, Maeve did have a couple changes that I liked. For example, um, where is it? The predation increase your movement speed by X percent while being out of combat. Instead, you'll be able to reduce the cooldown of Prowl by 0.2 each time you hit an enemy with a dagger. I think that this should allow you to at each point would add 0.2, meaning that you can reduce up to one second each dagger, meaning that if you hit two daggers, you'll reduce two seconds of Prowl with just this card alone. And all you need to do is just have aim. Cat Burglar is going to be insane, people. It's going to be incredibly insane. Now, one thing that I need to bring here is the damage reduction after Pound has been nerfed, but the damage reduction after 9 lives has been buffed. And also, uh, uh, Fight or Flight, uh, the 9 lives, uh, I think it's the speed that it would give you. Now you have 4 seconds of speed. You know, more time. Pretty good. Now, into Moji. Moji Snack Attack health drops are now visible for everybody and they can pick them up so it's gonna be sort of like a fight because you get the kills and people are gonna try to grab them but if you're playing as a team you can just you know you can coordinate things and they can just get it now but it does heal for less 600 per little plus which I don't think it still is really good if you think about it because even if you're being cauterized it's gonna be counting for a lot less and 600 HP I mean we're gonna have to wait and see all right um, they also reduced the uh, nerf the boom boom just uh, from 100% on the the targets around your main target that boom boom extra damage it would go around them instead of they taking 100% of the damage that the first target has taken is now 75 and tooth now applies its healing as an application almost like the mark of genos instead of being a persistent cloud that it stays in the ground and you have to stay in there to heal no it's just as soon as you touched it boom it's done whatever happens you'll get it um, you just need to go into the pool and get out, and that's it. Pretty good. Um, as for cards, they reduce the card that would heal you every time people would hit you on the magic bar barrier, which was a, one of the most used cards, which is, I really don't like this change, but sure. Um, they reduce the damage that you take after a magic barrier ends. You can go up to 15% damage reduction. I don't think people are going to bet a lot on this. 15% damage reduction on two seconds. I would prefer to go with speed, to be honest. So I could run away. Not gonna lie. Beyond that, there's not really much more here. Um, as for here's more, her burning breath, the card for the familiar sp uh, spit. Now you have more speed and it, there, uh, more duration, but now also has a four second internal cooldown. Uh, if you don't know what this card is, you should go in game and check it out. It's for basically applying marks on somebody. Um, I think it's that, yeah. So you, you, if you, you mark somebody that does not have a mark, you would get extra speed, and so you can get close to them much faster, right? I still think that this card should be upon applying a full mark, but whatever. Even so, now it has a four-second cooldown. Um, Will-O-Wisp now activates an, an eliminations in addition to killing blows and reduces the movement speed to five. So this is the speed that you get after getting kills. Now... Killing blows and assists uh, will give you. So pretty much like the one from Buck and Lex, I think, or Lex or somebody like I don't even know at this point, but even so, um, the movement buff is a lot less, but it lasts for longer, so it's actually pretty good. Let's go into Sky. Sky had her smoke daggers changed. Um, instead of being smoke screen heals allies within 400, which this is poorly written, but whatever, it's uh, smoke screen heals allies or 400 seconds with a 400 HP every one second. Instead, now you will be able to apply any sort of a card benefit that you put into the smoke screen. And there's multiple cards that have changed. For example, now you can put ammo into generate ammo, but it only happens every four seconds. You have to stay four seconds out of the smoke screen to then go back in and get more ammo. Um, instead of increasing the duration of smoke screen, which it may not be that good, to be honest. Um, 
Then you also have like increase the duration of the the speed. I believe this is the speed that you get after getting into the the smoke screen. You can get speed, you can give ammo, and you can heal people with the smoke screen now. If you put a lot of points into it, I'm probably not gonna use the one from ammo because why? There's there's champions that like the ammo that you're gonna provide here, here is so little that it it, it it's four versus five. You can make your math now. Twenty ammo. And you have to step up out of the smoke screen for four seconds to then go back in and get more 20 ammo. For certain champions, like for example, Raum or uh, Vivian, Vivian could actually work. But even so, like it's not that much. All right, continuing. Uh, she didn't have much more of a change. It was more just to the smoke and daggers. Cards for Talus. Instead of granting ultimate charge from hitting enemies, and instead of killing. Uh, now you can actually base, basically just reduce the ultimate charge. Oh no, no, I'm reading this wrong because they typed this wrong. Uh, basically, you will not be having ultimate charge for hitting people with the blitz upper instead of having to kill them, but the charge has been reduced. All right, they they, they typed it in one way on top and typed it in another way on, on their knee. Like I really don't understand what they're doing. Sometimes they they put these little lines on top. Sometimes they don't. I don't get it. Generate ammo after hitting people with Blitz Upper. Instead, now you can increase the knockback of the Blitz Upper. Instead of reloading speed on the card for Spirited, now you can increase your base HP, which is really cool. Uh, as for Yomi, now this one here, don't just go away yet. Um, Yomi does no longer pierce through enemies or has extended effect, extended range. Um, the Yomi basically is just going to be a damage buff to your third attack, but your normal blade will now do it by default. So you could be playing Guillotine, you can be playing Smolder or Yomi, and you will always have the Yomi effect of piercing through enemies with your third attack, which is really powerful for a flank. Now, I'm not going to lie. I still think this is not a good idea, but sure, whatever. Um... Now, the, for the cards, it uh, regenerates two ammo every 0.5 seconds activating, after activating Billow. And this card also got changed. Instead of, instead of having lifesteal after using World, now you can increase your movement speed after using World, which is going to be better for people to use World to escape. Instead of generating ammo after con uh, countering an attack, instead you can reduce its own cooldown of the counter up to 50% if the counter you're doing hits somebody so if you are countering you hit somebody you can now reduce 50 percent of your next counter which allows you to do more counters faster but it's you can only counter one attack per time so it's good and it's bad we'll see now as for bonking uh they nerfed a couple of cards here and then they also changed the card that would reduce the cooldown of poppy bomb by one second for each enemy hit with a grumpy bomb instead you can now increase the duration of the stun which with a grumpy bomb which is not bad now, Cassie has been nerfed on big game. She does 8% of max HP after hitting with Disengage instead of being 10%. Her dodge roll now has 7 seconds cooldown, but they also changed the card of the, the cooldown reduction to reduce a little bit more for the dodge roll, so you can reduce it a little bit more. And activating dodge roll now heals you instead of getting lifesteal after you do dodge roll with the card of Onslaught. Now let's go into Dredge. We're in the damages. Oh yeah, we are. Okay, <laughs> we're going fast. Cool. Uh, as for Dredge, uh, basically card changes as you can see here. Nothing really much. Drogo's pretty much card changes as well. Nothing really much here important. Um, as for Imani, they changed it. They removed the in-hand offset and the mid-air inaccuracy for both the Pyre Ball and the Frost Bolt, meaning that you're going to be able to hit shots a lot easier if you're jumping or if you're in the air. It's going to be actually pretty cool. She's going to become a new Sha Ling almost, and I wanted to talk about Sha Ling in a few seconds. Um, you can also, uh, its cooldown of the elemental shift has now been uh, buffed, so it has less two seconds. Uh, the Frost Bomb now has more speed on the projectile, but it has less stun, so one second instead of 1.5. The Frost Fire Glide now has more speed but it also it, and it has more duration as well it has more speed and duration so that's actually pretty good but i think they actually uh nerfed the card that would allow you to reduce the cooldown of the frost fire glad as you can see here and um other cards are just basically you know small little shifts you can check that out later now as for kinesa uh her mines i actually have a buff so they have more damage they have more hp and they have more range 
So pretty good. Uh, as for beyond that, the transporter now has a faster animation, so it's faster for you to use the transporter. It's like basically one second instead of one one point five almost. Uh, as for a sniper, you take less time to fully charge a shot. And beyond that, it's just card changes. We also have this one. Instead of healing for maximum HP after teleporting, now you can only heal up to 25% of your maximum HP. Uh, but you can activate this card every 30 seconds. And every point you put on the card, you can take 5 seconds of this cooldown. Meaning you can take up to 25 seconds of this and you can heal for 25% of your maximum HP every 5 seconds with 5 points on this card. So you can have your idea. Um... Power supply, instead of killing blows, generating ammo, now you reset the cooldown of transporter after you drop a certain amount of HP, meaning that it's an escape. So you can put this like at 3 points, 45% HP. If you drop below 45% and you have the other card, you just use transporter really quick. You know, maybe you just used it to go in and now you need to go out. Something like that, you know. Pretty, pretty good. Now, Leon had a buff to precision. So now she does more damage, but with less one stack. So it be like basically overall what they're saying is it will compensate you more for every shot, but it's only like four shots. So you're you're still gonna do the exact same thing, but for less shots. Um, you can heal more for for the card uh, with the valor. Any enemy, every enemy you would hit with valor, now you can heal more with it. And Sha Ling is the one that had the biggest changes. Now, there's a lot of things here that I still don't understand. So if you guys really know how this works, let me know. But basically. Uh, Recurve now has a buff, 10% faster draw rate. And the explosive arrows now actually are named Sand Trap. The talent itself is now named Sand Trap. And instead of being this explosive arrow you would throw dealing additional uh, 300 damage, now it will explode like before, but it's a bigger range, 20 unit, and will deal 100 damage and it will cripple every enemy for one second. So instead of knocking them back, it will basically cripple them. So here you here you go. Um, I think this is wrong. Like if you're going to go with an explosive thing, just at least remove the CC, but whatever. The Desert Shadow, the one that would give you extra damage after your first shot, instead, um, it, it basically cripples, a crippling arrow now silences enemies. I still don't understand. Like, the Crippling Arrow is named Crippling Arrow. With this talent, now cripples every enemy within one second on the range of the explosion. And with this talent, it silences enemies. Why? Silencing basically stops you from shooting even. Crippling basically just stops you from using your movement ability. So it's understandable, but at the same time, they're just trying to put in as much as CC into, into Shaoling. I don't think they understand that this is now what it's what people are asking for Shaoling, but whatever. His withdraw has less time now, so you can use, use it faster. His impaler arrow is now named a crippling arrow, and instead, the next shot fired from your bow applies a cripple on hit for two seconds. So you can apply it to one person, or you go with the talent and apply it to everyone that is in that area, but it's for less time, it's like for one second. I'm guessing that if you hit it directly to somebody, that person will still get two seconds, and the others one, the other ones will get one second? I don't know. And they basically transform Chaling into Hanzo. Now, I know that some people already said this is the old Cassie, but Cassie did not have an ability like this. She had the same abilities as she has now, but her bow would be like uh, basically Hanzo and Shaoling. Okay? Um, instead of planting yourself, you basically do the same thing, but you just don't plant yourself. You can move, uh, but with less speed. You, you move 20% less uh, fast. And every shot, uh, every shot now is 500 instead of 800. So you can do this more on the move, and you can still cancel it, but you cannot. It, it, it's automatic. After you activate it, it will start shooting, 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 and you can't stop it like Hanzo. And Hanzo, you can select what you want to do. Like you can use two arrows, or you can use them all in one one row. You can use four arrows and just not use anything else. With Shaoling, no, it will use it automatically. It does have less shots. It's only five shots now instead of seven. The cooldown is 15 seconds now instead of 18, and the duration is 1.8. I mean, there is less less arrows to shoot as well, so there you go. And of course, the damage has been nerfed. Now, beyond that, the Wind Wall Rapid Shot, which is would be foot planted, um, now hitting an enemy with arrow fix a fire during Rapid Shot applies a slow. So this is what I was talking about. 
um, every CC that they could. They could they, they're trying to put as much as CC into Shaolin that it's so annoying. Like, I know people who play Shaolin that are so strong, and then they're doing this. I really don't understand. But whatever, let's continue. Um, run, run them down for Crippling Arrow. Now increases the duration of Crippling Arrow's effect. You can go all the way up to 0.5 seconds. Uh, Strix has a nerf to his HP to 2000. And his pistol now does less damage, but has more ammo. And it is easier to hit. It has less inaccuracy on his base weapon, okay? Now, an authorized use was changed. Apparently, this is a typo. It's supposed to be 350. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure. So, if you guys have any sort of information, if this is 250 or 350, just let me know. Because it, apparently, this is wrong. This is supposed to be a 3. But whatever. Crackshot also has a change. Instead of doing this, now, Talon Rifle... Uh, now deals additional an additional 60 damage over 3 seconds. It basically, it's like a poison. And you can stack up to 3 times. And this damage will refresh every single time on additional hits. So, uh, basically you can apply almost like a poison to people. With the, the Talon Rifle, almost. And the Talon Rifle no longer can add shot. Now, I don't know if this is for the talent itself or just for the, his abilities. Because knowing... Evil Mojo, what they've done with the patch notes. I don't know if this is actually here. So it'll just let us know if he actually has headshots or not. So if you guys know this, please let me know in the comments down below. Well, I'll pin your comment or something like that. We'll see. Now, Tyra, uh, this is something that I did not knew. Her fire, just a, a based fire, you would have 50% reduced healing effect on it. And now, they took it away and put it into Burn Monster. I did not knew that. The bonus damage will has been nerfed from 50 to 30%. And this basically is like a Cauterize 2 now. Because, you know, Cauterize, uh, it's, it's a bit different. It's almost like a Cauterize 3, almost. Uh, but even so. The auto rifle now does less damage, but it has more ammo. And they also reduce the damage fall off at range. And they reduce the weapon spread. It's a little bit, but it's still good. So it means you're going to be able to spray a little bit more with, with Tyra now. Firebomb has less cooldown and it no longer applies the reduced reduce cooling healing effect. So if you're playing the Mark's talent or the you know the Nate's talent, yeah, you're not gonna be able to reduce healing effect with the fire. So this is something I didn't know. It's weird. I know I'm stupid. Sorry. Continuing. Napalm card, instead of using the firebomb will generate ammo, now it'll heal you over two seconds. Pretty good. Victor had a nerf to his cardio. Instead of healing for 400, now you heal for 300. On his cards, the card that would give you reload speed after hustle. Instead, you will reduce the cooldown of frag grenade every one second as you are in hustle. Now, if you have five points on this card, it means you can reduce one second of the grenade every one second. Going with the talent for grenades, this is just going to be spamming grenades all over the place. But hey, I'm not the one who thinks of these things. I'm not the one who has to nerf and buff the champions, but whatever. Um, the on the move, the card that would give you speed while you're cooking grenade, instead it will now give you speed after you throw a grenade. The beyond that, hit and run, and run now also applies when getting an elimination instead of just being killing blows. Um, is the, this uh, I believe this is the one the card that would give you speed after getting kills, but it has less speed to give. Okay, Viviana, Viviana. Now the card, the talents suspect everyone. Instead of you and your deployers have 20% less damage from people you're being revealed, instead the deflector shield now has more HP and its cooldown is half if it gets destroyed. Uh, but this effect can only occur every 9 seconds. So if there's like a flank that is trying to kill her, there's a smaller window to try to kill her because half of the time that she would have to wait for the second shield now is going to be, you know, it's not half of the time. It's going to be half of the time compared to what it would be before. So it's going to be less of a window. And you either hit her feet or you're really going to have to have, like, a lot of records so you can destroy the shield as fast as possible. And if you miss a lot of shots, you can destroy the second one. Um, informants. The card would heal you after getting killing blows on an enemy revealed. Instead, you just heal if the champion that dies just is being revealed, which is pretty good. You can throw a, a drone on a point. And a, and a hard spot to see, you're revealing that person that somebody else is fighting, and you get healed because that person, you know, just died. For Willow, uh, her Blast flower, flower talent that would basically give you extra damage for longer, now lasts, the, the duration of the extra damage is smaller, 
and the bonus damage is smaller as well so people do not abuse it i like that how i like that they change every single talent that every time that people start playing that talent a little bit more they need to nerf it if they're going to keep doing this we're just going to go on this vicious cycle where everybody is always going to find everything something new something better and they'll nerf it and nerf it and nerf it and nerf it and nerf it like this is not a healthy way to nerf, to balance a game gotta be honest um dead zone uh, the duration, the cooldown now is more, so it's harder to use, you don't use it as much. And instead of increasing your movement speed after using seedling, now you increase the speed of the projectile on a card. And there was also a card change here that instead of increasing your movement speed upon touching the dead zone, now it's less time, it's less percent, but you just need to activate that zone. You don't need to be in the dead zone, so, you know, it's not that bad. And that's pretty much it. Beyond that is just bug fixes that I'm not going to go through. There's a big list here under investigation, general, gameplay, you know, specific champion bug fixes. And you can go and check it out. I'll leave the link in the description so you guys can go there and check it out. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for pretty much all of the damage in flanks. If you want to know about supports and tanks, you're going to have to go to part one. This is going to be part two. There's too much here. I honestly didn't even want to do this video, but there's... There's just too much information that people probably did not have understood or maybe they'll miss because they just want to see like the talents and abilities. I was looking at the cards that really changed. That's possibly really important. Uh, and yeah, I'll be also coming up with another video uh, to show you guys the battle pass, the changes of the daily logins going into the battle pass and so on. I want to talk about that, although I really wanted to do it on PDS so I could show you guys. So I may wait for that instead of just talking about it and reading it from here i want to show you guys which is a little bit better and that's pretty much it i'll see you guys on pds which i still don't know when it is i don't think they actually mentioned mentioned it it should be like next weekend and i don't know if on saturday i'm gonna be available but we'll see we'll see that's pretty much it for this video guys thank you so much for watching that'll be it for today i'll see you guys next time and until then have a wonderful time bye bye